Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Brother Nathaniel, and on my right, Deacon Asa. We're going to open up with the topic on Cornelius, but before we deal with the topic, we're going to go to John 8, verse 32, as we often do. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, Latin man, black woman, and Latin woman. The truth of the Bible shall set you free, make you free as a people, as a nation under God, as the true nation of Israel. Let's go to our uh, baby names, classical baby names for me. Read the cover of that book for us. Classical. Name of this book is Classical Baby Names, Timeless Names for Modern Parents. Classical Biblical Baby Names. Open up and look up the name Esau. For us. I'm gonna show you something. This is a on a, this is a now I want you to see some. This is a baby name book written by a white woman. There's something she put in this book that a lot of you don't realize. Some of you do, and all praise to the most high. But what the scholars do, they always put one clue, one hint in one book, and out of the whole book, and all you need is that one hint hint to get the understanding. Read that. Esau, language, culture, origin, Hebrew. Now get down to the bottom. Of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, scriptures, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. Esau is the forefather of the Roman Empire. For all you skeptics out there, oh, Esau's gone. Esau is the so-called white man. Okay, from there. Give me the next book now. Uh, written by Time Life Books. It's called, what's the name of this book? Imperial, Imperial Rome. Rome. Now, go to, uh, I got the little piece there. See that green? About Septimius Severus. I'm going to show you something about the Roman Empire. Septimius Severus. He overthrew the Roman Empire. I have it highlighted down here. Armies based in several of the provinces had already proclaimed their own commanders as emperor. And one of them, Septimius Severus, African by birth and commander of the Danube, now marched on Rome and disposed the new emperor by auction. So now, Septimius Severus, it says African by birth. When you do research, you find out that Septimius Severus was a Jew. Why does it say there, African by birth? Because the scholars want themselves to know and remember he was a black man. So Septimius Severus overthrew the Roman Empire. So now, what I want to, I want you to show, let's go, drop that, let that go. Let's go to Acts 10, because what I need all of you to understand, was Cornelius a white man, or was Cornelius an Israelite? Let's find out according to the Holy Bible. We're going to, we're going to end this topic with this. Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. We're going to go through it nice and slow for the viewers. So get your Bibles, get your notebooks, your pens and papers, and take notes. Acts 10 verse 1. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. All I want is verse 1. Okay, that's it. That was it? Read it again. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band, called the Italian band. So now from there, watch this. Go to Acts chapter 18, verse 2. Because they say it says he was of the Italian band. Many of you get confused. Were Israelites in Rome? Did the Israelites ever live in Rome? Let's find out. Acts 18, all we want is verse 2. Acts chapter 18, verse 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, namely come from Italy. Come from where? Come from Italy. There was a Jew come from Italy. Now remember, I want you to understand, Cornelius was of the Italian band. There's much confusion throughout the Christian doctrine that, what was Cornelius? So it said, what, what was we read that again? And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius has commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. So Claudius Caesar commanded that all the Jews had to get kicked out of where? Of Rome. Out of Rome. Because the Jews, the Israelites, all throughout Rome. Was that it? That's it. Now let's go from there. Go to Acts 22. I'm showing you that amongst the Roman Empire, you had certain Israelites, many Israelites, who had citizenship of Rome. They were called Italian. They were called
killed Roman. Here's another example. Acts 22. We want verse 25 to 27. Acts 22, verse 25. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? Mm. So and Paul said, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that's a Roman? Go ahead. And uncondemned? Mm -hmm. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Take heed what you do to Paul, for he is a Roman. Was that down to 27? Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, meaning what? He had Roman citizenship. Because Romans 11 verse 1 tells you that Ro uh, Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin of the nation of Israel. So what did he mean there when he said he was Roman? He had Roman citizenship. Just like you at home. You have American citizenship. Was that it? Yeah. Now go from there. Go to Luke 3, verse 14. Now remember when John the Baptist was teaching, you had many people come to his baptism. Now watch what happened with the soldiers of Rome. Watch this. Now remember, John and Christ only dealt with the Israelites. Let's see what happened with these soldiers. Luke chapter 3, verse 14. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, and what shall we do? So the soldiers asked John the Baptist, what do we need to do for repentance? This is letting you know that these soldiers were not Edomites. They were not of Esau. They were Israelites. Go ahead. And he said unto them, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. So John the Baptist instructed them according to the law. From there, let's go back now to Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's go right back to Cornelius now. Okay, we're going to go through it nice and slow for you. Acts 10 verse 1, 1 and 2. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band, called the Italian band, mm -hmm. a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house. So now it said he was a devout man. Hold on, let's find out about this word devout, meaning devoted. Hold on, go to Acts 22 verse 12. The term devout, or meaning devoted, is used for the Israelites. I'm going to show you that. Acts 22 verse 12. Acts 22 verse 12. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law. He was devout according to what? According to the law. Let's go back to Acts 10 now. And 2 again. Acts 10 verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. So when it says he feared God with all his house and gave much alms to the people, he was devout according to, the, according to what? The law. The law, the law, like we read in Acts 22. Okay, understand that. Come on. And gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He prayed to God always. Come on. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So Cornelius' prayers and alms have come up to the Most High for a memorial. Where in the Bible did the Edomites' prayers become a memorial before the Lord? Huh? Show me that scripture, please. Huh? What verse was that you at? That was verse 4. Verse 4, come on. Verse 5. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. Go read down to 11. Go ahead. He lodges with one Simon a tanner. A tanner, tanner means someone that works with leather. Go ahead. Whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers of them that waited on him continually. Mm. And when he had declared all things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went upon the housetop to pray about so, the sixth hour. Peter went up on a housetop to pray. Now, what I want you to realize, Cornelius had high, uh, what's the word he had? Mm, ranking status. Ranking status in the military. So, you know, you got these dumb, ignorant, unlearned Israelites. You see them on YouTube. Oh, oh, you in law enforcement. Oh, you wicked. You Israelites, shut the hell up and get a job, all right? The most High accepted Cornelius. His memorial came before the Lord. You don't know what you're talking about. You're in many of our forefathers in law enforcement, in the military, okay? And they feared the Most High and loved the Most High. So shut up and listen and learn. Now, what verse you at? And also point out that Christ told the soldiers, 
to do no violence to any man and to not to deal with them falsely. Right, right. So that was John the Baptist. Exactly. Right. As long as you dealt with the people accordingly, you could deal in law enforcement. Exactly. What right. verse you at? Um, ten. Go ahead. And the and he became very hungry and would have eaten. So this is Peter, right? Peter on his Go rooftop. Ahead. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So Peter fell into a trance. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending up unto him. And as it has been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. So let's stop right there. Let's get the understanding of the dream now. He sees a, he's in a trance. He sees a vision of a certain vessel let down from heaven. And it had four, four sheets knit at the four corners. Four corners. Let's go into the biblical precepts to explain that. Because everything in the New Testament is based upon Old Testament scripture. Let's deal with the certain vessel. Go to Hosea 8 verse 8. Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. See that? Israel is swallowed up amongst the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. Now the other part of that trance talked about a sheet knitted to four corners, right? Oh, hold that. Go, no, let that go. Go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I said I would scatter them, the them as the Israelites, into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So God prophesied that he would make the Israelites cease their remembrance, cease from among men, and make them scattered through the four corners. Four corners of what? Four corners of the earth. Now let that go now. Let's go back now to Acts chapter 10, verse 11 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 11. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, mm -hmm. wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So now in this vessel with the sheet, it was all kind of unclean animals. And a voice from heaven said, Rise, Peter, rise and eat. And what did Peter say? But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Mm, so Peter said, no, Lord, I was raised in the law. I can't be eating this unclean food. What verse you at? Um, 15 now. Okay, 15. Just read 15. And the voice spake, him, spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. What God has cleansed, what God has cleansed, call thou not common. Common. Let's get a precept to understand that part. Hold that. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 now. Ezekiel 30, as I said, all of the New Testament scriptures are based upon Old Testament writings. Always remember that. If you remember that, you'll be okay. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land. 37 23, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 37 verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. Meaning the Israelites would no longer defile themselves with their idols. Nor with their detestable things. Mm -hmm. Nor with any other transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned. And will cleanse them. And will what? And will cleanse them. And will what? And will cleanse them. God will cleanse the Israelites. So shall they be my people. So shall they be my people. Let's go back now. Let's go right back to verse, what verse was that? 15 again. 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Showing you what? That those unclean animals that he saw represented men. And as we read down, it's going to be crystal clear. Read on. Verse 16. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them doubting nothing. So now remember, in the, dream, the vision, it said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, No, but now he's thinking about the dream. What did this dream mean? Now, a voice said, rise, Peter, go meet the guys at the door. Go ahead, read down to 22. For I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? 
And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man. A what? A just man. What does it mean, a just man? Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Go to Luke 2, verse 25. Because it's calling Cornelius a just man also. We read that his, his, his prayers went up for a memorial before the Lord. He feared God always with his whole house. Come on, Luke 2, 25. Luke 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And the same man was just and devout. Waiting for consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. You see that? So this guy, his name was Simon. Simon. Simon, it said he was a just man and devout, and a what? And that Holy Ghost was upon him and waited for the consolation of Israel. So all those similar terms, those words, those nouns are put upon Cornelius. Okay? Let's go back to Acts. Acts, what? In Acts 10, what verse you at? You left off at. Uh, we're in 23 now. 23. Read from 23 to 28. I'm sorry, 22. Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews. And of good report among all the nation of the Jews. That's a, I need you to pause right there. What does the word Jew, it's an abbreviation. What, does it, what is it short for? The word Jew is an abbreviation for what word? It's an abbreviation for the word Judah, referring to the kingdom of Judah. Under the kingdom of Judah, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those three tribes were called Jews. Read that again. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews. All the nation all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. and to hear the words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. So he called his family together and near his friends. Come on. And Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now Cornelius fell at the feet of Peter. Come on. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. And he talked with him. He went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them. So Peter saw all Cornelius' family and friends with him. Come on. And he said unto them. Watch this. Ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto what of another nation. Read that again. And he said unto them, Ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. So now, you get confused right there. Many of you Israelites get confused. You know how it is an unlawful thing to come unto one of another nation. Another nation. Now, we just read, I want you to backtrack about the nation of the, of the Jews. Read, read that part again. What verse was that? 20? 22. Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews. Among all the nation of the Jews, meaning the nation of Judah, the kingdom of Judah. Now go back to what you just read about it is an unlawful thing. And he said unto them, Ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew. Meaning of the kingdom of Judah. To keep company or come unto one of another nation. Mm, another nation. So you go, what does this mean? Because you're so afraid of reading the Old Testament scriptures. I'm going to help you out right now. Hold on. We're coming right back there. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 and verse 22 now. Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. The answer of the Jew and the Gentiles is explained totally in Ezekiel the 37th chapter. And I'm going to pull out one verse to help you. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountain of Israel. I will Israel. make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Christ. He's the king. And they shall be no more two nations. What, what, what? They shall be no more two nations. Read it again. They shall be no more two nations. Because the Israelites were split into two nations. You had the nation of J the Jews, which is Judah, and the nation of Ephraim, which was called Israel as well. Read on. 
Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore Neither at all. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Was that it? That's it. Now, from there, watch this. Let's go to John 4. I'm going to show you some more. I am done with this topic about the two nations, the two kingdoms. There was a division amongst the people. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi called the kingdom of Judah, called the Jews abbreviated. Then you had Ephraim, Manasseh, and the other tribes called Israel or Ephraim which were the northern kingdom of Israel. Let's go John 4. We want verse 7 to 9. That's it. John 4, verse 7 to 9. The woman of Samaria. John 4, verse 7. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Who was the Samaritans? Hold that right there. Let's go to Isaiah 7 and 9. Who was Samaria? Because a lot of you don't know the geography of Israel either. What land, what landmass called Samaria was given to who? Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 9. Watch this. Isaiah 7 verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. What? And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Let's go back now. John chapter 4 verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him. So she was of Ephraim. Go ahead. How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaria. The kingdom of Judah does not deal with Ephraim and the other tribes. That's what she was saying. Jump to verse 12 right there. Verse 12. Verse 12, art thou greater than our father Jacob? This is, I wanted just to go there to prove to you that she was not a convert. She was not an African. She said what? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So she was of Ephraim. She said, art thou greater than our, our, our father Jacob? Come on. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? So now, let's drop that go to John 11. I'm going to show you something about the two nations. I'm still dealing with that. Because uh, Peter said, you know how it is an unlawful thing for a man which is a Jew, meaning of the kingdom of Judah, the nation of Judah, to deal with one of another nation. I'm showing you the other nation was the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Ephraim, called the kingdom of Israel. Okay, here's some more. John 11, 51 and 52. John 11, verse 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, mm -hmm. he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. He prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. What was the nation that was in Jerusalem? The nation of Judah, the kingdom of Judah. The primary tribes there was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's what made up of the priests. That was made up of the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees. Read it again. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only. And not for that nation only. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. That he should what? That he should gather together in one. That he should gather together in one. Where did we just read about that? In Ezekiel 37. Have you forgotten? You should be taking notes. That he should gather together in one. The children of God that were scattered abroad. Meaning the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. That's the mystery that you're learning now. Let's go back to Acts 10. And you are at verse 28 again. Acts 10 verse 28. Acts 10 verse 28. And he said unto them, You know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew. Meaning of the kingdom of Judah. To keep company or come unto one of another nation. Meaning the northern kingdom. You Ephraimites. You Manassites. We can't deal with y'all. You idolaters. Go ahead. But God hath shown me that I should not call any man. Hey, wait, 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 wait. But God has shown me that I should not call any man. Any what? Any man. Any what? Any man. Go ahead. Common or unclean. That's the proof that the vision that Peter had about the unclean beast, that he said, Nay, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean, represented man. What type of man? Ephraim and the other tribes of Israel who had gone into idolatry, okay? But Cornelius was coming fervent in the spirit of the Lord. He prayed always to the Lord, but the Jews still didn't deal with them until now. Read that part again. And he said unto them, 
You know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God had shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Mm. Go ahead. Therefore I came unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. What verse you at? 29. Go ahead. Read down to 34. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Mm. Send now therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God. What verse you at? 33. Go ahead. To hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I have perceived that God is no respecter of persons. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. No respecter of persons in what context? Hold on. Go to Exodus 2 and 25. I'm going to show you something about that respect of persons. Because you other nations and you black men that follow the white man, you read that and go, everybody's accepted. That's not what that's talking about. What does it mean God is no respecter of persons? Exodus 2 and 25. Exodus 2 verse 25 and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them and what read that again and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them so God has respect unto the children of Israel opposed to the other nations you need to understand did your preacher teach you that no let's go back now to Acts what verse you at now read that part that Peter just said verse 34 verse 34 then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Right, because amongst the Israelites, whoever keeps the law, and he's going to explain, I ain't even going to say nothing, read that. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Wait, 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 what does that part mean? In every nation, he that feareth him and what? And worketh righteousness. And worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Watch the next verse gives you the understanding of that verse. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. What, what, what? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Because the children of Israel were scattered in all nations. I'm going to say it again. The children of Israel were scattered in all nations. At the beginning of the lesson, we read about, what was it, Aquila? Aquila. Aquila was where? In Rome. It said many of the Jews were in Rome and Claudius Caesar had them kicked out of Rome. Why were they in Rome? Because the Israelites were scattered in all nations. Read that again, please. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. So the word of peace came by Jesus Christ to the children of Israel in all nations. That's what Acts 2 is talking about. Acts 2 and 5. Read that. Now let's just go down to verse uh, 48. Go ahead. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, mm -hmm. how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, mm. for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did in both the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, mm. whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Watch this. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly not to all people but unto witnesses chosen before of God what verse you at 41 go ahead not to all people but unto witnesses chosen before of God come on even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. What does that mean, whosoever believeth in him? Because you go run with that too. You run with that. Hold on, give me Acts 2.21, I think it is. That whosoever. Because you, you preachers, you ministers, you fake reverence. Whosoever, my brother. Whosoever. Acts 2.21 explains that. Whosoever. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, you think you got me there? Read the next verse. Ye men of Israel, 
ye men of Israel, hear these words. So who is the whosoever? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Let's go back now to Acts 10. What verse you left off at? Um, 46, something like that? Verse 43. 43, go ahead. To him give all the prophets witness that the, through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Mm -hmm. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So the same spirit that fell on Peter and them in Acts chapter 2 now fell upon Cornelius, his family and friends, which were who? Of the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. Come on. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished. They of the circumcision, who's that? That was Judah and Benjamin and Levi. They were astonished because for years, for centuries, they did not deal with the northern kingdom of Israel. Come on. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. For they heard them which spake with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter. Wait, stop right there. You know what? I'm going to back up about. Read that verse again about uh, the Gentiles. Read that part. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now, watch this. Hold that. Hold that right there. Get me. Mm, what do I want? Get me John 7 and 35. John 7 and verse 35. Because a lot of you get, you stumble on that term Gentile. John 7, I'm going to show you that the word Gentiles also put upon the Israelites, further proving that Cornelius is an Israelite. John chapter 7, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews among themselves. Then said Judah amongst themselves. Whither will he go that we shall not find Where's him? Where's Christ going to go that we can't find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go to the dispersed Israelites, those scattered Israelites of the northern kingdom? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? Amongst who? Among the Gentiles. Because the Israelites were scattered amongst the Gentiles. And let's see what they called them. And teach the Gentiles? They were calling the scattered Israelites Gentiles. Now, hold that. No, let that part go. Go to, go to the Maccabees now. 2 Maccabees 6. 2 Maccabees 6. Uh, 6 through 9, I think it is. We're just dealing with the word Gentile. Okay. Watch that. I'm going to show you the history on it. 2 Maccabees 6, we want 6 through 9, that's it. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feasts or profess himself at all to be a Jew. It was a law, a Greek law, that amongst Judah, they made a law with them that they could not call themselves Judah. That was a law that the Greeks set up. Now when you read this, all the other tribes that were scattered followed the Greeks wholeheartedly. But the kingdom of Judah fought against the Greeks. Read. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. They forced Judah to worship these false gods. Come on. Moreover, they went on a decree to the neighbor cities of, he of the heathen. Watch this. By suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews, mm. that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Watch this. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles. Whosoever would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles, meaning whoever would not become a Gentile. Should be put to death. Should be put to That's the history you don't know. That's the history your ministers don't know. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Acts 10. And you were at verse, was it 47 or 48? About oh, Gentile. Where was that word at? Right there. Right here. What verse is that? 45. 45 again. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So these Gentiles were the Israelites that had followed Greco-Roman customs. Go ahead. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And as we've read, we found out already that Cornelius obviously repented of that because he prayed to God always and the Most High accepted him. Go ahead. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, mm. which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So Peter said, we got the whole, they got the Holy Ghost just like we did. Ephraim and them got the Holy Ghost just like us Jews, just like Judah did. Go ahead. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So that was the entire Acts the 10th 
chapter. Watch this. We ain't done yet. Go to Acts 13 now. Verse 45 and 46. Here's another understanding. I'm going to show you this. I'm showing you that what I'm teaching you right now is the proper understanding on Gentiles here in the New Testament. Acts chapter 13 verse 45 and 46. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. When Judah saw the multitudes, they were filled with jealousy. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, Watch this. It was necessary that the word of God should be first have spoken to you. It was necessary that the word of God should first, should first have been spoken to you of the kingdom of Judah. But seeing he put it from you. But since you Judites, you of the kingdom of Judah, you reject this word. And judge yourselves unworthy. You judge yourselves unworthy. Of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Paul said, we turn into the Gentiles. So what that mean now? Hold that. Give me Zechariah 12 and 7. I'm showing you more precepts to help you in your understanding of the New Testament. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12. Right there, yep. Zechariah 12, verse 7. It said, remember what Paul said. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you of the kingdom of Judah. But since you turn it from yourselves... And, for, and judge yourselves unworthy, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Let's read the prophecy. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. The Lord also saved the tents of Judah first. The Lord saved the tents of what? Of Judah first. Judah first. He would save the tents of Judah first. Meaning the gospel was preached to the kingdom of Judah first. 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 That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that the other tribes of Israel don't magnify themselves against Judah. That's the same thing in Acts 13. Let's go right back there. Acts 13 and verse 46 again. I think it was 45 and 46 again. Acts 13 verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. You of the kingdom of Judah. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We turn to the other Israelites according to prophecy. Okay, from there. Let's go to Acts 15. Chapter 15, we want verse 7 through 9. Watch this. Acts chapter 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel. Now, we, they're still talking about Cornelius, okay? Peter's explaining the history of what happened with Brother Cornelius. So now, because there's a dispute in the church, saying, listen, the other tribes of Israel, they got to do the Levitical stuff too. The argument was, no, 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 they got to follow Christ. They ain't got to follow Levi. They got to follow Christ of the tribe of Judah. He's the king. He's the son of God. Come on. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Didn't we just read that? The Lord gave the kingdom of Ephraim the Holy Ghost, even as he did to the kingdom of Judah. Go ahead. What verse and you at? Nine now. Go ahead. And put no difference between us and them. And put no difference between us and and them. There's no difference from the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Ephraim, the kingdom of Israel. That was nine. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Now, you might still be stuck on them, just for a moment. Let's jump over to verse 13 to 16, because Peter in the spirit is going to further prove to you that these are Israelites. Cornelius of the Italian band and his family and friends were Israelites. Here's the proof. Acts 13, Acts 15, I'm sorry. Acts 15, we want verse 13 to 16. Acts 15, verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out a name, take out them a people for his name. You see that? So Simon is Simon Peter. 
He said, what? Read that part again, please. Simon had declared how God had first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Watch this. And to this agree the words of the prophet. Now James is going to explain it with scriptures to what happened with Cornelius. Come on. As it is written. As it is written where? He's going to quote the book of Amos. Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Watch this. As it is written. Just read. Go ahead. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen. Ooh, read that again. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. What is the tabernacle of David that is fallen down? The 12 tribes of Israel. What does it mean it was fallen down? The kingdom was split into two. And then they were dispersed and scattered into captivity. Read it again. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that, it, that the residue of men Stop. might see... Stop! Read that again! I want that to resonate in your mind. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. So Israel fell, went into captivity, Israel was split into two kingdoms. And I will build again the ruins thereof. He will build Israel, the 12 tribes, back again. That's the ruins. And I will set it up. And God said he will set up the 12 tribes. That the residue of men might seek. So wait, the wait, 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 wait. He just told you a secret who Cornelius was. He said, read that. All I want is that one verse right there. That the residue of... No, no, mm -mm. This verse here. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. Remember during the time of Christ, there was only one kingdom that was primarily dealing with Christ. It was the Jews, the kingdom of Judah. Now when you get to Cornelius, Cornelius feared God, okay? He was a devout man. It said what? After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. Israel was split into two kingdoms and they were dispersed. Go ahead. And I will build again the ruins thereof. He would build back again the ruins thereof, meaning build back the 12 tribes of Israel. It started with the kingdom of Judah, followed by the kingdom of Israel, which is Ephraim and the other tribes. Everybody understand that? So the clues is here. It's written here for you. Okay, go ahead. And I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. So now, what's that part talking about right there? I don't want you to stumble there. Let's get the actual quote. Go to Amos. Hold on. We're coming right back to Amos 9. We want verse 11 and 12. We're going to read the whole quote now. Okay? The entire quote. And then I'm going to explain it to you. Okay? Amos chapter 9. Okay? Verse 11 and 12. Okay, because this topic is a heavy topic, brothers and sisters. You might think you understand it, but in the end you realize you didn't. Okay, Amos 9, verse 11 and 12. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David. Here's the prophecy that James was quoting. Read it again. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Mm. Because and it was fallen because the kingdom of Israel was split into two kingdoms, which became known as the kingdom of Judah, the Jews, and the kingdom of Israel, which is Ephraim and the other tribes. Go ahead. And close up the breaches thereof. What does it mean, close up the breach? A breach is a split. Close up the breaches. Bring the tribes back together again as one. Come on. And I will raise up his ruins. And raise up the ruins of the Israelites, the 12 tribes. And I will build it as in the days of old. God promised he would build Israel again as in the days of old. When David and Solomon were ruling, we were, we were fortified as one nation. Come on. Watch this. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Now this is the part here. That Israel may possess who? The remnant of Edom. The remnant of Edom. Go ahead. And of all the heathen where, uh, which are called by my name. Who were the heathen that was called by God's name that Israel's going to possess? You had the Herodians. You, you had, not the Herodians. You had Herod. Excuse me. You had Herod. You had Antipater. You had Bernice. You had King Agrippa. They all called themselves Jewish. Those were Edomites that the prophecy said what? Let's read that again. And that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up the ruins and will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. That Israel may possess, meaning own in slavery, 
the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, and of all the heathen which are called by my name. Was that it? Say it, the Lord say that do it. Say it, the Lord that do it. Now go back to Acts. That Acts chapter, what was that, 15? And we want, what was that verse again? Verse 16. 16. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Watch this. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruin thereof and will set it up. Now, this is the part here. Remember in Amos, it talked about that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the heathen which are called by my name. Because we're going to own these nations, brothers and sisters. And this is going to explain it right here. James just used other words, but he's talking about the same thing. Come on. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Who's the residue of men that's going to seek after the Lord? Edom. How is Edom and these other nations going to seek after the Lord? In slavery. In slavery. Go ahead. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Like Herod, Agrippa, Bernice, okay? They're all going to seek after the Lord because we're going to have them in slavery, captivity, and force them to learn the laws of the Most High God. You had something you were trying to get now. Isaiah chapter 14, it says the same thing. Let's get that, okay? Isaiah, where are you going? Isaiah 14? 14 verse 3 we could start with. Oh, the captivity, right? Yeah. Go ahead. That the heathen shall cleave unto them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because there's going to be captivity in this new kingdom. In the kingdom of heaven on earth. So we're going to show that right here. Isaiah 14 verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For what? For servants and handmaids. Mm -hmm. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Now that was it. Letting you know in the kingdom of heaven on earth, all the nations going into captivity because God is a just God. Understand that. You might forget all that happened to your ancestors, but God never forgets. Okay? From there, let's go back to Acts 15. And we want to start at verse 16. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. That's verse 16? Yeah, 15, 16. Right, go ahead. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. Mm -hmm. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Right, all the Gentiles. Now that Gentiles doesn't mean all the heathen, all the other nations. They're going to seek after the Lord like we just read in Isaiah 14. They're going to cleave to us. How? In captivity. In servitude. We're going to force the laws of God upon them. And there's going to be a heavy penalty whoever don't want to serve. Watch this. Hold on. Go to Zechariah 14. Zechariah chapter 14. We want verse 16. To 18. Okay. Zechariah 14, verse 16 to 18. Zechariah 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So it said all nations that fought against Jerusalem are going to be forced to keep the laws. And it's pinpointing the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. And it shall be that whoso, whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth. So when we tell all the families of the earth, you slaves, you nations, it's high time for you to come up and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. What's going to happen? Whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. There shall be no rain in their land. So what does that mean? You might be sitting at home as ignorant as you want to be. So what? No rain. What? happens if there's no rain in your land. Famine. Drought. Understand that. Death. Read it again. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Famine, drought, death. Go ahead. 
And if the family of Egypt go now, up, now Zechariah's going to give you an example. He said, for example, if the Egyptians with their old African selves, because the ancient Egyptians are Africans, if they decide they don't want to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, what is the Feast of Tabernacles, by the way? It's in honor of what the Lord did for the Israelites when we were in in the wilderness dwelling in booths, dwelling in tents. Like the North American Indians dwelt in tents you call teepees. We dwelt in tents we call booths, okay? The same thing. Hold on. Give me Leviticus 23. Give me that law. Leviticus 23, uh, I think it's around verse 30, something like that. Leviticus 23. That's it. 23, uh, where is it at? Around here. Right, yes. Uh, start from here. Piece of time. Yes, yes, start there from 34. And then we're going to jump. Leviticus 23, verse 34. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The 15th day of this seventh month the shall... The 15th day of this seventh month... Shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. Shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. For seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. You shall do no work for hire therein. Come on. Seven days shall ye offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now remember, this was before Christ made the divine sacrifice. Okay? Because how do we honor this now? Hold on. Give me uh, Hebrews 10 and 4. In case somebody's going, well, we had to offer a sacrifice which was a, a bull, an ox, or a goat. How do we do it in Christ under the new covenant? Hebrews 10 verse 4. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Here we go. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world... When Christ came into the world... He said, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. The Lord didn't want the bulls and the goats and the ox no more. But a body hast thou prepared me. The body prepared was the body of Christ to sacrifice himself for the nation of Israel. Let's go back to Leviticus. Leviticus 23, and what verse was that? Leviticus 23, verse 35. Come on. And on the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work mm -hmm. therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon this day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Watch this. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. The Feast of Tabernacles. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Because we built booths with those teepees, tents with those uh, bowls. Go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. Watch this. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Let's go back to Zechariah now about if Egypt. And call it, it shall, read it. Call it read it. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, have no rain. Wait, read that again. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rains. Read the verse above it, please. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Mm. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen. So there will be a plague upon the heathen that do not go up to honor what the Most High did for the 12 tribes of Israel, wherein we dwelt in booths for seven days, okay? We're going to celebrate it for eight days, correction. Eight-day celebration. The first day is a Sabbath, and the eighth day is a Sabbath. It said there shall be a plague upon Egypt and any nation that does not come up to honor and remember what the Lord did for the 12 tribes of Israel. Was that it? That's it. Okay, from there, that was down to 18? 
Um, yeah, I was the 18th verse. Read yeah, 19. You have a little bit more. Go ahead. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the peace of tabernacle. Wait, we read that again. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. You see, like right now, a lot of you uh, don't, in this country, do we celebrate the feast of tabernacles? No. But there's going to be a judgment for the nations that refuse to keep God's laws. There will be no Halloween. There will be no Thanksgiving. There will be no Christmas. Understand that. We're going to keep the most highest holidays. Okay? Understand it. Go ahead. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You, this is the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. There's going to be punishment on the nations that don't keep God's holidays. Was that it? Oh, um, that's it. So now, with all that, Malachi, get me Malachi 3, verse 6. Malachi 3, verse 6. I want y'all to understand this. Because you might, oh, the Feast of Tabernacles, my minister never taught me that. Your minister's a fool. And I pray that your minister can repent if he's an Israelite. And if your minister refuses to repent, run and head for the hills. You better study here. Get yourself right and repent. Where does that go? Malachi 3, Malachi 3, 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord. I change not. No, no, I thought he changed. For I am the Lord, I change not. Provide I want to go there. Showing you that from, uh, uh, hold on, get Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Watch this. I want y'all to pay close attention to this. Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statue and his judgment unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. What does that mean? It means God has never dealt with the other nations. So what does that further prove? It proves God never changed and said, you know what? Although Cornelius is another uh, Edomite, I'm going to deal with him. It said what? Read that again. He had not dealt so with any nation. God has never dealt so with any nation. Now Malachi 3 and 6. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. God has never changed his program. He dealt from the, with the Israelites from Genesis to Revelation. He never changed his program, brothers and sisters. It's your dumb, unlearned ministers following Babylon, following America, and their Christian lies. That's where the confusion comes in. So brothers, so sisters, we need all of you to support this truth. Okay, we can't do this truth alone. We can't do it without your help. We need you to send in your donations, send in your free will offerings. Okay, help us keep this program a lot alive and on the air because we can't do it by ourselves. We need your help. We must come together as one people united in Christ. Okay, for more information, visit our website at www.israel. Unite.org. And if you want to see more videos, visit our other website on www.youtube.com forward slash Nathaniel7. Okay? I pray all of you understand that. And with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. Shalom, Israel.